Okay, this is a this is a bit unexpected. I would categorize it. I would I would deem it sort of a bit unexpected here. Although I don't know how unexpected this was because you know their their ideologies sort of were very very similar. But there's this fascinating fascinating clip from TYT's old school show that they do, and he basically explains how he is not a democratic socialist and he refuses to use the term comrade. And we will be taking a look at this clip here in a second. But basically, if you don't know about Destiny, right, Destiny has completely lost his mind. You know, he used to be good in the past, but now he's just completely gone off the deep end. Uh, it started off with him calling workers stupid, and then it went on to him defending stock buybacks, defending Nancy Pelosi over AOC and, you know, the squad, and, uh, you know, really sort of uh, doing weird backflips for Joe Biden and other candidates like that as well. Um, but look, man, he basically responded to this tweet by saying, Amen, Brother Jank, preach it, which obviously means that he's in agreement. So it's a, it, it was a bit interesting here. Now, uh, we're going to take a look at this clip here, but Destiny is basically, he's been on a tirade and he's been on a mission. Okay, he's been on a mission as of late to essentially combat and purge all of the lefties from his audience. Um, in which I would say he's done he's done a pretty good job of that. I think he's purged most of the lefties from his audience. I really think he has. So he's really just been kind of going after sort of far left ideologies and people who hold those ideologies, you know, in his in his audience. So let's go ahead and hear this. Uh, let's go ahead and hear this Cenk Uger video right now. I'm not a democratic socialist of America. Uh, and now the last part will make might make people even the most angry, um, comrade. Nah, I'm not calling anybody a comrade, okay? So it's incredibly stupid politics, okay? Like, and and I'm not gonna do it. Uh, and I don't, and you're not my comrade, uh, okay? You're, you're my, you know, you're a fellow citizen, I love you, I'm gonna fight for you, like no one fights for you. But I'm not calling you comrade, uh, and I'm not using Soviet terminology. Let me replay that for you. I'm not a democratic socialist of America, uh, and now the last part will make might make people even the most angry. Um, comrade? No, nah, I'm not calling anybody a comrade. Okay, so it's incredibly stupid politics. Okay, like, and and I'm not going to do it. Uh, and I don't. And you're not my comrade. Uh, okay, you're, you're my, you know your uh, fellow citizen. I love you. I'm going to fight for you. Like no one fights for you. But I'm not calling you comrade. Uh, and I'm not using Soviet terminology. So look, man, this this is a really, really fascinating clip because if you know anything about leftism, there's so many different flavors, there's so many different sects, there's so many different, you know, little differences in ideologies, whether you're an anarchist or a communist or an anarcho-communist or you're a socialist or a democratic socialist or, you know, whatever the anarcho-syndicalist, whatever the case may be, okay, you're whatever you know, ridiculous far-left ideology that you subscribe to. There's so many of them, but I don't know if I've seen someone take a stance like this in sort of the progressive sphere. Now, what you got to keep in mind is Jenk is an old dude. I think he's almost 50. I want to say he's 49, although he might be a little older than that. So he's, he's a pretty old dude. I think he's Gen, Gen X is what I think he is. So, you know, keep that in mind as well. Keep in mind that he's, old, he's an old guy, okay? He's not really into the sort of zoomer uh you know memeing type of stuff so that's not really it's like you know using comrade as like a meme and stuff obviously he's not going to do it he's too old for that because he's not a young guy so he's a boomer you know not literally a boomer but his mind he has a mindset of a boomer um but he's a gen xer obviously and what you saw there in the beginning he says i'm not a democratic socialist of america the dsa guys is really cringe now i want to say the dsa does do some good works and it does do some good work in endorsing certain good candidates in certain elections. But uh, there's definitely an issue with the DSA in that they really make the left look bad. Like, for example, not too long ago, they voted to make their platform anti-prison. So we're not just talking like like anti-private prison. Of course, that's great. But they just want to abolish all of them, which is complete insanity, obviously. Um, so, you know, they definitely make the left look really stupid, so I totally agree with him on that, but they do do some good work here and there, but him saying he's not a democratic socialist, meaning he's not post-capitalist, is anyone really surprised by this? I don't think so, because again, like I told you, he's older. You also have to remember this, guys, 
he did also used to be a Republican. So he wasn't just somebody who was always left. He wasn't somebody who was just sort of going left all of his life and just sort of inching left. And left. Although he did end up inching left later on, obviously. You know, he didn't spend his whole life in that sort of direction. So he came from the right wing. He, you know, turned into what he is now. What's even more fascinating is apparently he's on record as saying he's skeptical of worker cooperatives. And the example he used was that, like, it was really difficult for the people at Occupy Wall Street to even decide on a pizza to order, which is pretty funny. I don't think he understands that, like, there are managers and, you know, there's still, like, a hierarchy in there in terms of, like, what actually goes down and who makes decisions. Like, there's still managers, just managers answer to the workers. Um, so there's still, you know, sort of, there's actual structure in these worker cooperatives. But the fact that he's not pro-worker cooperative is probably the most fascinating portion of this. Because I don't think there's really any other lefty commentator I could think of in the progressive online YouTube sphere, okay? Whether it be Kyle Kalinske, David Pakman, Sam Cedar, Michael Brooks. Michael Brooks is a full-on socialist, by the way. But I know for sure that Kyle Kalinske supports worker cooperatives as well as different things. Like, for example... Something really good we could pass. Uh, there's a law in Germany where it's like, depending on the employee count a business has, a certain portion of the board has to be voted on by the workers. So I think it's something like if you have 1,500 or more, it's like one third of it has to be voted by the board or something like that. You know, it depends on how many employees there are, but the board has to be voted on. Some portion of the board has to be voted Um they're called co-determination laws, by the way. So we definitely want to pass that for sure. But, you know, what we also need is... And Bernie's proposed this, by the way. He's proposed two things. He's proposed giving, uh, you know, people initial capital to start these worker cooperatives because that's always the hardest thing to do. That's the biggest roadblock for these cooperatives is actually getting that initial capital to start up the business. But he's also, you know, pr uh, he's also, you know, uh, introduced legislation to... Uh, basically make it so that workers can buy more shares into their company and then have more of an ownership stake because, you know, having an ownership stake is not the same as worker cooperative. But the fact that he's not pro worker cooperative, I find to be really interesting. Now, Destiny is also not pro worker cooperative at all. He spent like a lot of time recently just sort of uh, pushing the idea that workers are dumb and that worker cooperatives are not good and that, you know, the traditional capitalist uh, model is a better way to go. So, it's a super interesting, I want to call it an alliance that they're having there. Now, when it comes to the term comrade, I agree with him on that. I, you know, if you use the term comrade unironically, you are really stupid. Like, if you actually use that unironically. Now, well, uh, here's the thing, okay? Comrade is not, is not something that, like, was started with the Soviet Union, nor is it something that, you know, ended with the Soviet Union. But, you know, there are certain other signs that get hijacked by different groups, you know, which ones I'm talking about, uh, that, you know, you no longer can use. So I think that's kind of his argument there. But if you unironically, genuinely call other people comrade, you are really cringe. You are seriously cringe if you unironically. Now, people ironically will call people comrade as a joke. I mean, I guess that's fine, obviously. But... You know, there are certain people who I feel like over... And I know I'm a little bit of a hypocrite on this because, you know, like the little Mao picture, I know. But, you know, there are some people who sort of normalize it too much to an extent where it's like literally everything of their, like, art and just everything is just straight up, like, hammer and sickle and, you know, Stalin and, you know, whatever, USSR iconography and all this other stuff. Uh, it, they, some of them do go too far in that, okay? Some of them really do go too far. And I know I'm a little bit of a hypocrite on that, but, you know, I don't do it to that extent, which I think is bad. But, you know, Jenks an old dude, and so it makes sense why he's going to do that. Plus, like, he run like, you remember when Charlie Kirk said that he lives like a capitalist every day? Jenk also lives like a capitalist every day. He lives like a capitalist every day. He runs a, you know, a business with, like, over 100 employees. You know, they got, like, a $20 million donation, uh, you know, investment. It's not a donation, it's an investment you know, into the business, and, they, you know, they, they run it that way, that's the way they run it, and he's not a fan of worker cooperatives, he prefers the traditional capitalist hierarchy in businesses, and so, you know, I just personally found this fascinating, because I don't think, I don't think that there are any other progressive commentators online who 
subscribe to this. Even Sam Cedar, I believe, is for uh, worker cooperatives. Michael Brooks is a full-on socialist. I know for sure Kyle Kalinske is pro-worker cooperative. Now, for me, there's a difference between um, passing legislation to encourage worker cooperatives as well as worker ownership and, like, the government literally mandating uh, worker cooperatives. I'm personally not for workers uh, or the government mandating every single bit. Not only do I think small businesses being worker cooperatives is completely impractical and doesn't make impractical and doesn't make any sense, but it, just in general, I'm not I'm not for the government literally forcing every company to be, uh, you know, all of the all of the means of production to be socialized. And I think that's where I draw the line. So if you want to know my sort of flavor of leftism is, I believe in obviously all the things like Medicare for all and all that stuff, right? But I also support uh, encouraging through legislation that be giving startup capital for worker cooperatives as well as money for workers to buy up shares in their own businesses, both of those things, as well as I also believe we should pass worker, uh, you know, uh, co-determination laws like they have over in Germany, in Deutschland, you know, where depending on the amount of employees you have, a certain portion of the board needs to be voted on by the workers. Those are all things I support. Now, I personally stop at I'm not for full-on socialization of the of the means of production. That's that's where I sort of call it quits and draw the line. At that point is where I draw the line. So, you know, and I, I personally find things like, you know, anarchism or whatever, whatever far-left ideology you want to take. First of all, tankies are terrible. They're idiots. I think we can all agree on that, right? They're horrible. But, you know... Even when it comes to stuff like anarchism and just really, really like out there leftist ideology, I really can't help but laugh at things like that because of just the sheer fact that it's so untenable and so ridiculously unrealistic. And I just find the I just find that it'd be kind of clownish to be honest with you. So I'm in a weird position where I'm sort of like a social democrat, but like I'm not a Jenk Uger social democrat though, because I do think worker cooperatives are really good, you know. Cut out the middleman, you know what I'm saying? Cut out the owner class so that workers can maximize their own profits. Um, you know what I'm saying? So, it, I just, you know, I don't know. I'm not a socialist. I'm not a, so, I'm not a democratic socialist. I'm a social democrat, but I'm further left than Cenk Uger is a social democrat. So, I don't know what exactly I'd call myself. But that's sort of my personal ideology when it comes to leftism. But I absolutely, I found this clip to be very, very, you know, fascinating as well as destiny uh <laughs> this alliance between destiny and jank and i I'd, I'd like to see a conversation between the two i think that'd be very interesting i'd like to see a conversation between the two i really would but uh, let me know your thoughts on this down below very curious to hear them